Um, so sadly, in this cool, no evidence, let's just transfuse the patient uh, environment that we're in today, uh, I'm here to talk about some tedious research. Um, but I am representing a fantastic research team that stretches into the dozens. Um, if you Google SatCare, um, you'll see this is a European Space Agency funded trial. It's three quarters uh, of a million pounds. It's running over a couple of years. We're looking at uh, multiple endpoints, ultrasound, satellite communications. Uh, yeah, so strap yourselves in. Um, <laughs> Conflict of interest, uh, my children live in the north of Scotland and I tend to put them out into the north of Scotland where we're from, uh, so it's in their interest and my interest that pre-hospital care gets a bit of a kickstart in that area. Um, this is Scotland, um, just a hats off to all the Europeans in the room, I voted to stay in Germany, um, but anyway. Um, <laughs> um, anyway. <laughs> Uh, this is Scotland a couple of weeks ago. Uh, this is Scotland last week, believe it or not. Uh, this is Scotland a few days ago. Um, this is the north of Scotland. Um, and, this, and this is the kind of workforce that I'm dealing with on a daily basis. So this is the substrate that we're working with. We're talking about teams. You want this guy on your pre-hospital team. Stuff can be moved. Um, to, to put you in context with where our research is being done, uh, any Game of Thrones fans in the audience, hands up. Excellent, I work in Castle Black. It's on the wall. Uh, if you can see that yellow dot at the very top, surrounded by all the bumpy stuff and the islands and the ocean, that's Inverness. Uh, token Scottish accent, from now on it's just Australian or a dodgy Dublin one, uh, if I'm trying to be a sarky bastard. Um, <laughs> As you can see, we're a long way from pretty much everything else. Um, and I can hear you saying, why is this guy doing a talk on technology if he lives a long way from it? Um, and that's a fair question. The environment that we work in is an austere one. It's often a challenging one from the pre-hospital point of view. We took a Irish city boy who's used to the Sydney beaches and parked him on the top of a snowy hill when he came to visit a few months ago. And I think that's basically why I'm giving this talk uh, is as payback for suggesting we weren't gonna put you back in the aircraft. But um, what we're dealing with, if I can jam that, is an absence of critical care in the north. So our environment is frustratingly challenging in terms of logistics. We also don't have a critical care in reach for the majority of our patients up here. This is the footprint of our national retrieval service in terms of primary work. Um, so as you can see, there's quite a north-south divide. Um, in the south, these guys will be there at the roadside in about three minutes, and in the north, <laughs> That's myself on the left. Um, sadly, the morbidity and the mortality of our patient load doesn't match that spread of care, um, and we do have a lot of work to do. There's plenty of people out there who need more care than they're getting. Um, again, why am I talking about high technology research then, when this is possibly an environment where a cup of tea and a wee plaster might be a step up in the care that we can provide? Excellent question. Um, and to a certain extent, the agenda wasn't set by us. This is you know, the Jedi Council of 2011's work um, when they sat down and penned what they thought should be the priorities. Pre-hospital ultrasound topped the list in terms of technology interventions as an avenue of pre-hospital research. And I exhort you to look at the other things on that list. That still holds true today. As Anne and Wolfgang were highlighting, we are still in an evidence-free zone for much of what we do. We still need to be punching above our weight in terms of numbers and funding to prove that what we do actually might be a benefit to the patient. For us, it's a no-brainer, because if this is, this is Saturday night on call two weeks ago, this is your ambulance pre-alert screen, and sure, that looks like you've got an idea as to what's coming in and when, but this is what they're coming into. This is the weight they're really gonna hit when they hit the ED. So anything that can up the game of that pre-alert information that can start interventions earlier, is worth paying attention to. Excellent, and if their pre-hospital journey is already an extended one, and in our region, sort of one to two hours pre-hospital just transit time is offering a challenge, it also offers an opportunity. If you're looking to test a pre-hospital intervention, potentially time zero is a lot further back in these kind of environments, so why not test here? And we've got an obvious precedent. Um, I'm sure plenty of you work in environments where you've got CCU outreach, telemetry, uh, coming into a qualified set of eyes to tell the pre-hospital teams, yes, thrombolize, yes, go to PCI center, yes, organize uh, aeromedical retrieval from where you are based on what we see. So it's kind of done and dusted as a model. 
Uh, and that's what we want to test with ultrasound, because the rest of you keep buying ultrasounds, and you keep going out to scene with them, and you keep equipping each other with a new toy, and here's a better one, and here's one that works on my mobile phone, and here's a photo of me with a photo of the fluid, and look at what a big difference this is going to make. But we haven't got the evidence to justify that cost. We've barely got it in hospital. So how can we go out and get it? What are the questions that are nagging in the back of your mind when you're chasing the funding for yet another piece of kit? And I've got the same questions. Anecdotally, I think the answers are yes, we make a difference. Big scans shouldn't take too long. The person with the patient should be doing it. And who should be teaching them? Pre-hospitalists. So we're going to test this with a study. 1,000 patient RCT, five ambulances, telesonography, satellites on the ceiling. We're also going to do a 1,000 patient validation study comparing X-ray with ultrasound for distant interpretation of lower limb injuries. How are we going to do it? Well, five ambulances, five crews, five stations. They've got satellite dishes on the roof. They've got a comm solution in the back. They've got an ultrasound. They've also got a direct link to us. They've got a webcam. We get a video pre We see the ultrasounds. We send them back our advice, if any. To a certain extent, we're also hoping that this is going to result in a benefit somewhere, but it needs to be patient-focused. It needs to be quality of life. It needs to be mortality. It needs to be something that actually makes sense, not a trivial rise or fall in lactate or a change in scene times, something that actually adds up. Fracture diagnosis trial, couldn't be simpler. Hurty, hurty bit, ultrasoundy. Do you see a fracture, do you not? Compare that to your actual point of care diagnosis at x-ray once you make it to the tertiary center. So these are the studies that we're doing. This is the satellite view live of all of our vehicles um, out at their locations. And I hope all of you, by your red color that I see, are thinking, I need lunch, and I need to tell this guy what a stupid study this is. That's the emotion that I'm getting, because you are all seeing this has a Hawthorne effect the size of an elephant. We cannot blind people to who has been scanned and who hasn't. And if there's one thing that I'm going to do, if I see a patient has been scanned pre-hospitally, they come in to me, first thing I'm going to do is repeat the scan, because I'm better at it. So maybe doing this scan pre-hospitally is just going to trigger us to do more ultrasound in resus, and thereby any associated benefit. And at the end of the day, if we're filming these people, getting tele-advice, maybe that's where the real bang for buck is going to come from with this kind of service. And you're all right. You're very red, and you're all very right. But I'd like to suggest that's a good reason to do big studies. That's a good reason to do lots of patients. That's a good reason to do meaningful outcomes. So that if you do see a benefit to these complex bundles of care, you can say it was a worthwhile one. This is real world, real service study. And if you're doing an ultrasound on a patient, you're not going to divorce it from the patient or their vital signs or their prehistory. You're going to marry it up. So we want to test a real service. And just imagine, if we spend all this effort and time and it's a negative trial, that's potentially worth even more. If this is a medical reversal, if this is a let's not do therapeutic hypothermia anymore moment, that's going to save a lot of money. It's going to annoy a lot of people with ultrasound machines, but it's still worthwhile doing the study. So here's our complex team. As you can see, it's multi-stakeholder. There's lots of folks. There's lots of flow diagrams, etc. cetera. Um, but for me, it's a large and diverse meeting of minds. And I exhort anyone who enjoys the team that is pre-hospital care, that is resource care, the team that is proper research is just as stimulating. If you're sitting in a room with comms engineers, satellite guys, uh, the academics, the people who are going to refit the ambulances, the frontline crews, you've got some really interesting stuff to chat about that looks like this. Uh, this is a technical solution. Um, I think I'm, I'm the person with the skirt down the bottom there, um, <laughs> the remote doctor. Uh, this is what happens when you let boffins uh, with 3D printers and drills into the back of a frontline ambulance. Um, they're doing the software, the hardware. Myself and colleagues were more involved in the training, the governance, the protocols, trying to rationalize stuff from in hospital to out. Um, video packages, it sounds really boring. Um, what it boils down to is I get to do carpentry on mammalian meat in order to give everyone lots of fractures to look for, uh, which just couldn't be more fun. Um, we're also trying to, as I say, translate what we do in the hospital that we think is validated. Even in small-scale trials, we think these protocols we do, the rushes, the blues, the falls, um, but are they actually valid in the back of an ambulance? 
do they have any utility? Are they even practical? So we're road testing these, making the aid memoirs, and putting the teams through their trials. So what have we learnt thus far that I would like you to take home? Well, if you want people to fund your hydrogen-powered rocket ship, first prove that you don't ignite the barbecue the moment you let near it. Um, by which I mean our research team in Inverness has been beavering away on novel applications of ultrasound and telemedicine for a good few years. So we've got the runs on the board and built the relationships so that we could pitch an idea like this to someone like the European Space Agency and expect them to only quietly laugh in a sort of Swiss fashion. Um, <laughs> Two, if you are convinced that you are the only person who can hold the probe, then you are arrogant, lazy, or insane. And by which I mean paramedics are doing this now, and they will be doing it better than their in-hospital colleagues, because they've got the time to drill and practice a technical skill. And finally, it's all about expectations. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank